Hey, welcome to the Braxton's uh, War Room. Uh, taking a look today at uh, Gorizia 1916, Sixth Battle of the Asanzo. Going to be reviewing the uh, August 11th turn, and consequently, it's going to be the final review of the game turn because the Italians have reached their victory conditions for a full victory. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk a little about how that happened and uh, as the Austro Hungarians, what I could have done a little bit differently. So the big news hit here that really pushed it overboard is the Italians pushed up and they created this bulge last turn. Let me get this out of the way. Um, they created this bulge in the line last turn and they were able to capture this turn at Verto Yoba, which is a 5 VP space up here in the secondary line of trenches back. And uh, they were able to also capture the whole town of Garicia, which is worth a total of eight points, two, two victory points per space. Captured a couple more victory spaces over here, and of course they still had the uh, the victory point spaces down from earlier in uh, Mount St. Michelle, which is six victory points here, and a couple other sporadic victory point hexes here, here, and a couple over here too. So they reached, uh, they need at least 30 victory points and able to do so. And um, um, as far as the turn went, uh, mostly there wasn't a lot of action. There was a little bit of push here by the Italians where I tried to put the red arrows, pushing up this way. Uh, not a lot of action down here. The Italian troops are pretty beat up, so they were just sort of moving forward, trying to bring in fresh troops to the front. Um, over here, same thing. There was just a couple major, major attacks right here, pushing the Austro-Hungarians back. Now, one thing I will point out is that the Austro-Hungarians did have the initiative this turn, and they activated about, I think they activated about six or seven brigades, and mostly, uh, this is the problem with playing multiple games and not playing this game every so often. I, I somewhat forgot a little bit about some of these victory point spaces. I think it would have been inevitable, though. The uh, Austro-Hungarians pulled back over here to their secondary lines of trenches, trying to create a defensive barrier. My big concern is that the Italians were going to be able to sweep this way and move up to these larger victory point hexes up here at the north of the map. you got the fives, the fives, and, of course, over here in Coleman, this one's worth ten. So they pull back to the secondary line of trenches, as you can see here, and a little bit down here as well. Uh, little did I realize, because I wasn't really counting up the victory point hexes probably as well as I should have, really all the Austro-Hungarians needed was to take Garizia and these victory points here and some of the others that they had taken earlier. And that spells the end of the game. So, you know, I... I I think that, and I, I'm going to end it here, there's no reason for me to keep playing. The Austro-Hungarians, as you can see, lost an enormous amount of forces compared to the Italians. They don't have the capability to strike back as well to retake these positions, especially as the uh, uh, Italians are moving all these units up. One thing I will say which is interesting about the system is the um, congestion that's been created by all the roads in this area, trying to bring the artillery up into range. You can see all these flipped artillery units that's on their move side. And, and what happens when you flip artillery units to their move side, they count for stacking, whereas normally you can put two brigades stacked with uh, two artillery units if they're, if they're uh, unlimbered. But when they're limbered and ready to move, you can't violate stacking. So it creates this enormous amount of congestion, uh, overpacking on these roads, trying to make way for these artillery units to move up closer. Um, but as it's, you know, the way it went, the Italians didn't totally need it. They had enough in range from previous turns where they were able to pound those positions. And I think the Austro-Hungarians moved back a little too soon. And of course, that's my fault since I'm playing both sides. Um, aside from that, I really enjoyed this game. I am actually playing two games with two different opponents on Vassal right now. And from what I've learned from my, from my solo play here, I'm definitely going to apply it to those games. Um, I did finish turn one in one of the games, and you know it's it's a lot different. I think I I might have made some minor rule state rule mistakes early that maybe I think gave the Italians a little bit of advantage, but not too much. But I'd love to play this again sometime face to face. It's a little bit of a challenge with all the informational counters, but no worse than great GBOH, which I love to play. So hopefully I'll be able to do that eventually. And also I'd like to play the uh, the second game from the system, which is. Um, um, gosh, Stroff Expedition, which uh, shows the spring offensive in uh, 1916, where there's a lot more room to maneuver. 
Um, so I look forward to that. Anyway, I'll do a short review, uh, but that's the review of the of the of the, uh, the last turn uh, for me anyway of August 11th. So I made it halfway through the game before I called it. So not too bad for uh, first time. All right, I'll uh, post a, a short review sometime very soon. All right, thanks for watching.